What's up, buttercup? As you can probably tell from the intro, this video is all about the brand new Sony FX3. Pete from Sony Adelaide was kind enough to lend me this camera for the last 10 days, so today we're going to review this strange little device. We'll talk about this in a second, but if you're new here and you want to support the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, dinging the bell, and if you enjoy the video, give a big fat thumbs up. That stuff really helps this channel grow, and I'm super appreciative. All right, FX3. Everything I say here is from the perspective of a Sony A7S3 user. I've had that camera pretty much since the day it came out, and I absolutely love it. So if you've seen a review of just how good that camera is, you probably know what direction this is going. Also, just because Sony lent me this camera doesn't mean I have to say how good it is and can't tell you any of the bad bits. Because trust me, I love this camera, but there's some bad bits. I've shot every single day for the past 10 days with this camera, so I feel like I've really put it through its paces. I've shot everything from still photos all the way through to raw video. Probably not gonna touch it all on photos today. This is a cinema camera. But I do feel like it's really important when you're reviewing a product, you have actually put it through its paces like I have. If you just go into a store and pick it up for 20 minutes or you read the spec sheet, you're not reviewing anything because it's the real world actually using it in the field and realizing, oh, I don't like this or, oh, I love that. You don't really get that vibe when you're in a store. I also feel it's important to note that this camera is so highly compared to the Sony a7S3 because it's kind of the same camera. Or is it? My first impression of the Sony FX3 when I first held it was, where's the rest of it? <laughs> it's small. It is really, really small. That's what she said. That's my joke. Even with a decent piece of glass on it like this 85mm G Master, it's still noticeably lighter than the a7S3 with a cage on it. It's basically a video-centric A7C. It looks good. I love the gray. The texture's awesome. Feels really good in the hand. The one thing, the tally lights, they look epic. I'm really gonna struggle giving them back because they are very, very useful, especially when you're shooting an interview. And my Sony A7S3 doesn't have that. It's even got a built-in active cooling system, which the A7S3 doesn't have. It has a fan on the side, and this should allow you, if you're a long-form interview content shooter, you're gonna be fine. And if you're 4K 120p slow motion streamer, you'll be fine as well. Could you imagine if you actually were a 4K 120 streamer? 4.8 hours of real time would be 24 hours of 120 frames content. Now that is this many frames, and that's quite a bit. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually spent like five hours trying to do this math equation. I got the answer and I know I was correct. I just don't know how I got there. I tried to get Rosie on board to work it out and do this whole little like goodwill hunting scene. Couldn't do it, couldn't do it. I knew the answer, couldn't work it out. I'm dyslexic and math is not my strong point. So that's what you get, sorry. So if it's smaller, what's it missing? Well, most notably, the viewfinder. I actually wanna talk about this a little bit later in the video because my analytics tell me three, three and a half minutes is what you guys are keen to watch. I want you to hear a few more of the positives about this camera. Cause it's a weapon. Using this camera has taken a bit of getting used to. And it was only the other day when I did a multi-cam interview shoot when I pulled the A7S3 out of the bag and I realized the weight difference is actually surprisingly significant. If you're a travel filmmaker, and I know that that's a small market at the moment with everything going on. However, this may just be the perfect form factor for you. So when things start to open up and get a bit more freedom to roam, this may be something to look into. Because when you're traveling, every gram counts. And that's where I should lose some weight. <laughs> uh, just gonna say, because this is a point in the video, when I say that single point axis can be unsafe, that is, sorry Sony, that is just swiveling. I don't like that. I should be more careful. I'm just gonna take that off. If you want high-end vlogs, you'll love the flippy screen. However, I personally am not the world's biggest fan of a flippy screen because my personal thought, when I'm filming and I'm shooting in line, I want my lens and I want my body in the same axis as my face and the direction I'm looking. Looking off here just puts me a little bit off balance and just feels a little bit unnatural. I know that might sound like a really small thing, but when you're actually out there shooting, it's those little things, those little details that really, really help. Gotta enjoy the little things. I personally am not the biggest fan of the flippy screen, but there is a time and place. Vlogging or keeping the screen protected in transit. I still think the Panasonic S1H has the best screen around on any camera. It does the old flippy thing for your vloggers, but it also flips up and down just like a regular screen. When you're in full manual mode, you have the ability to lock off your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. It's absolutely brilliant and I absolutely love it. Basically, if you click your ISO button, you get the little no smoking sign, the little lock button, no entry. And it means if you try to change your ISO, nothing will happen. If you hit that ISO button again, we're now open, we can change, we're ready for business. 
lock it off again, doors are shut, let's go. Basically, they lock in place so they can't be accidentally bumped or changed, especially if you've mounted this on a car, it's only an interview, other people looking at the camera, stuff like that. I absolutely love that. One thing I do find really strange is the labeling of the camera is a little bit different. On the A7S3, on our control wheel, we'll have our ISO control. Basically, if you hit on the right, it'll select your ISO and then you spin. I always customize mine so it's just straight spinning on the ISO wheel. And I've got my three main features right at my fingers. However, on the FX3, we have our shutter down the bottom here, we have our zebras and our peaking, some other video centric features. Where this is a bit of a head scratcher for me, if you are an alpha shooter, use an A1, an A9, an A7 series camera, your muscle memory is going to make you cock up. And I can promise you that because it made me screw up all the time. Anytime I had two different cameras out, if I was shooting photos on the R4 or I was dual shooting with the A7S3 and the FX3, I always made mistakes. Sometimes those mistakes can be the difference between getting the shot and missing the shot. So that's not nothing. Now, Jed, can't you just change the shutter wheel to ISO and the ISO to shutter? Of course you can. But now the function that says shutter doesn't do shutter. And that hurts my soul. My OCD just ticks with stuff like that. And what happens if you've got a second shooter or a crew member and they're trying to change the side and I'm like, WTF, it won't change. <laughs> it's a small things like that that I do really think come into play when choosing what camera you're going for. Rule number 32, enjoy the little things. To me, it's annoying enough that if you're a hybrid shooter, an A1, an A9, an A7 or something like that, and you're buying this camera as well, I'd almost go for the A7S3 just to have similar features feeling the same. However, if you're buying this as your only camera or a backup to an FX6, send it, it's not gonna worry at all. I don't know, I just woke up from a little nap, it's a little dark, but you guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> it's gonna be all you know, so just play on. Also, not sure what I'm doing wrong, when I put it into photo mode and I put it into manual, and I try to change any of my settings, it says, can't do this while in manual mode, which kind of makes no sense because that's what manual is. I'm just noting this, but don't take it as a negative because I'm sure it's some deep far off menu that I haven't discovered yet, or it's firmware or something like that, and it can be updated. And after all, it's a video camera and a bloody good one at that. So let's get back on track. You'll notice the joystick has been moved to the top of the camera. I used this once, it felt very unnatural, and I found myself using the touchscreen or the D-pad more often than not. Which is a bit strange because on my S3, I live on the joystick. So that's not nothing because usability is very important. I just found when looking down and controlling with your thumb like that from the top down, a little bit unnatural, didn't really get things going where I wanted. On the back there, it's a very easy direction I felt. Maybe it's just me, it just felt more natural on the back. Now this one might be the most important one of all for me, the actual results of the camera. Not what it says it can do, but what it actually does. And as you saw from that intro, it can do some pretty cool shit. And just like the Sony A7S III, these two cameras might be the best bang for your buck for full frame video cameras anywhere on the market. And just in case you're not impressed, have a fond of this. I need to say a big thanks to Rosie. She took six to seven hours out of one of her days on holidays to stand there and just take directions from me. Thank you very much. It was kind of like that scene from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. The less you do, the more you do. Do more, do less, do nothing. Well, you gotta do something. <laughs> well, you no, you gotta do more than that. She did great, I'm very, very thankful. Thank you, Rosie. One of my mottos with camera visual stuff, if it looks good, it is good. It doesn't matter if you broke a million technical rules to get to a masterpiece, that's still a masterpiece. And that's really important to remember. And just like specs on paper, cameras can exceed or underwhelm expectations. This is definitely an exceeder. The image quality is absolutely brilliant. And would I happily add one to my kit? Yes, but. 
To explain further, I asked my friend Adam from Invisi Studios, who's thinking about potentially swapping to an FX3 to FX6 combo, and this is what he had to say. It doesn't have waveform monitor, shutter angle, no DCI 4K, just quad HD, and it also doesn't have 23.976 frames a second. One of the major differences between the FX3 and the A7S3 is that the FX3 is marketed as a cinema camera. And those things that Adam mentioned are some pretty obvious inclusions for a cinema camera. His thoughts were, if they fix those things via firmware, quote, I'll buy one for sure. <laughs> and I kind of feel the same way. If the S3 and the FX3 are the same with those sort of makeup, is the S3 technically a cinema camera? All right. And his final point, which will start off a little bit of a sore point for me about this camera, is they ripped out the viewfinder and marked up the price. Like I said before, the viewfinder is gone, and I can totally accept that because it is a cinema camera. I would have loved an optional viewfinder that attaches via the hot tube, kind of like the Canon M6 Mark II. I rather like using a viewfinder in bright sunny conditions or as a third point of contact. Be it I try to do like a swivel maneuver or in windy conditions where things just aren't very easy to hold still, I do really enjoy that third point of contact. But nonetheless, the viewfinder is gone, which means you're probably gonna wanna use a monitor because if you've used a Sony camera before, the screens, well, they're attached to the body and that's the main thing. <laughs> you're gonna wanna use a monitor. So enter my mounting solution, an 18 cold shoe adapter for my Ninja V. Yeah boy, that's a nice small bit of kit, but I wanna put a top handle on there and get some epic doco shots. But that's cool, cause it comes with this dual XLR wielding audio top handle recording thing. This handle, however, neglects to have any cold shoes on it or any hot shoes. And that to me is a bit of a letdown because if you have a monitor or if you have a Rode Wireless Go or really anything, a light that attaches to your camera via a cold shoe or a hot shoe, you're gonna to have to go and buy a screw-based mounting system. And depending on the gear used, that can actually be quite an expensive little add-on, so not nothing, something to think about. But Jed, the FX3 has mounting points all over it. Well, okay, what if I wanna use my monitor on top of my camera like this, mounted by the cold shoe, and I wanna put a wooden handle on the side to stabilize my shots? Well, I use NATO rails, and that means we lose access to the HDMI port, and we're back to square one. The NATO rail would also only have one screw, as anything that you'd put into any of these mounting points, which means with a bit of movement, it may be prone to coming loose. When I say that single point axis can be unsafe, mounting any handle in here may be a bit of a liability if you're moving it around and all of a sudden it comes loose and you've got a bit of a broken lens on your hands. It happens, it's a thing. This is why Ari locating pins or dual holes for NATO rails would probably have been a better option or maybe even an, an integrated NATO rail Something to think about, Sony. Okay, so just hang your monitor to the side or to the top with a magic arm. You're right, I could, but it really starts to outweigh the camera. You got your monitor over here, you're trying to fight against it constantly rolling over, you're not gonna get the shots you want because you're gonna be so busy trying to stabilize your camera. And this setup is a little bit large and clunky considering this camera is largely about its small size. Largely about its small size, your boy's a comedian. That's just making it big and clunky. I don't want jerky shots. I know that some of these problems can be sorted by going out and buying different accessories, that's just more money. And it's also something I thought Sony would put a little bit more thought into, but it's probably not a deal breaker. If they're not gonna put two mounting points so we could use NATO rails, I'd love to see those ARRI locating pins, like I said. So then things are just locked and secure. One thing I did notice, when you screw in the top handle, you use these two screws plus the hot shoe. You actually can't screw anything into that one. You can't screw a magic arm, you can't screw a NATO rail. Bit of a waste, bit of a waste. If you do buy one of these cameras and you do want to buy some things from Small Rig, I do have an affiliate link down below. If you want to support the channel, many thanks. If you don't, have a good day. So would I buy one with all the things I just mentioned? Yeah, I probably would. And like Adam said, if it had those extra things, I'd probably definitely buy it. Probably definitely, that's a bit of an oxymoron. I'd definitely buy it. If you're a Sony hybrid shooter and that control wheel, shutter wheel thing doesn't mess with your head, then send it. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> but if it does, it's probably not the play for you. For the extra money that this costs you over an A7S3, what do you get? Essentially, an XLR adapter top handle, a smaller body, and some tally lights with no viewfinder. If the FX3 came out at the same price as the A7S3 and didn't have a top handle included, as a filmmaker, I'd go and buy the FX3. All in all, I really, 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 really like this camera. <laughs> I uh, just wish I had a few more bits and pieces. And like Adam said, all those things, the 4K DCI, shutter angle, all that sort of stuff can be added later via firmware. But fingers crossed that that happens. If that does, I might sell my S3 and pick up one of these myself. But if that doesn't happen, this is pretty much the same camera as the A7S3, which does that technically mean that the A7S3 is a cinema camera? I don't know, you tell me. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Either way, I'm really not gonna enjoy giving this camera back. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up. That stuff really helps. 
Let me know down in the comments. What do you think? FX3, A7S3. What did you go? What would you go? What else do you think it's missing? Let's have a bit of a conversation down there. If you are not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, <laughs> and you can be notified of future content. My name's Shed Dayray. This week, I've had the song Shine by Collective Soul literally living in my head rent free. I think it's driving Rosie a little bit wild. <laughs> I've tried listening to it multiple times to get it out of my head, but it's just, it's in there. It's that little, it's that little riff at the start. Anyway, go listen to it. I'll catch you in the next one. We're done. Bye. Quick it, quick it. Don't go to the top of Too much to knock it back up and I bring the house down whenever the odds are stacked up against me. I know no weapon for us, shall prosper. It's tempting to quit now, but I'm refusing the off. Feeling like a champion. I can't sleep no ambient. The weather outside is weather. I appreciate you. Bye.